Inspiration and Insights from Frontline Ministry to the Nations is a podcast of Wheaton College, Illinois, that features Wheaton College graduate school alumni, primarily Billy Graham scholars around the world. They share stories of God's activity in their lives and where they serve. The title reflects the nature of Jesus, the Son and Word of God being sent to the nations, and His followers also being sent to the nations. Please let us know you're listening by engaging on social media. Like, follow, share, subscribe, and comment. You can find us on wheaton.edu slash listen, and most places podcasts are found. For scholarship information for Wheaton College Graduate School, please visit wheaton.edu slash Billy Graham Scholarships. Hello, my name is April McLaughlin, representing the Billy Graham Scholarship Program at Wheaton College Graduate School in Wheaton, Illinois. Thank you for listening today. I'm excited to be with Alexander McCreese today. Alexander graduated with an MA in Evangelism and Leadership from Wheaton College Grad School in 2020, so quite recently. He is married to Kendra, and after graduation, they moved to Greece. Alexander has just fulfilled his six-month mandatory military service, and I'm very eager to hear from him what his experience was like. I also want to learn anything that Alexander gleaned about sharing the gospel in this environment and what connecting points might exist between the gospel and young people today. So, Alexander, thank you so much for your time today. It's great to be here, April. So, Alexander, I always ask folks to share a little bit of like interesting trivia about themselves so we get to know you just a little bit. All right. Well, I think a good place to start on trivia is where I met my wife. It okay. is a surprising destination. Okay. Yeah, because so far we know you spent time in the U.S. doing your studies and of course now you're living in Greece. So those are the places we know in the world so far. So we'll see what, what that answer is at the end of our interview. Okay, let's start at Wheaton. I'm curious what your experience at Wheaton was. I think you were newly married at the time, and I just feel like your career here was a blur. <laughs> you were so busy. So what, what is your experience at Wheaton? Well, I had an uh, incredible experience at Wheaton College. The classes were a huge highlight for me. I felt that they were really on point in terms of uh, the frameworks they gave us for thinking about the world, the frameworks they gave us about thinking about the gospel and how to interact with culture. Yeah, each and every one of my professors was a joy to interact with, and I, I could not have um, had a better experience at Wheaton. Great. And am I right? You were newly married, right? And then commuting um, and also raising support to move overseas? Yeah. Um, our time was really, really busy. My wife and I were both uh, studying simultaneously. Uh, she did an MA in spiritual formation. We were full-time students uh, traveling and uh, fundraising uh, to move overseas and also really engaged in uh, both the Orchard Evangelical Free Church uh, in Northfield and uh, the Greek Community Church in Des Plaines. We uh, attended uh, English church in the morning and Greek church in the afternoon, as we would say. And Sundays were always our busiest days. Wow. And you did receive a Billy Graham scholarship. Glad you're one of our scholars now serving in Greece. Yeah. Would not have been able to attend if it hadn't been for the Billy Graham scholarship. So I'm very grateful for that. Oh, you are a great student. And I know you're going to have a long time on the field now. So you returned to Greece right after your graduation, right? Yeah, we actually came just a little bit before I technically graduated. I just did my uh, comprehensive exams uh, from here online. So we moved back uh, right at the end of 2019, beginning of 2020. Okay. And please tell us about your tie to Hellenic Ministries. Yeah, so uh, my grandfather actually founded Hellenic Ministries back in uh, the late 70s, early 80s. It's a organization with uh, the goal of re-inspiring the Greek people with the gospel and uh, recontextualizing the gospel just for your everyday person in Greece, as well as taking the, the gospel uh, eastwards towards uh, the other Mediterranean countries that are in, in the area. What was your grandfather's name? I, my grandfather was uh, Kostas Makris. Yeah, he was initially a missionary in Indonesia, uh, had uh, some pretty serious health issues and ended up coming to Greece for the second half of his uh, working career and founding Hellenic Ministries. So we currently work with Hellenic Ministries. We have a fairly large team here on the staff, about 100, and 100 or so uh, personnel, and really focused on reaching, meeting the needs of the Greek people in, in very practical ways, just in every, every facet of life. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you were telling me about an amazing program that you were part of um, in the summers. Do you want to touch on that? Yeah. Um, every summer for the past, uh, I guess it must be like 12, 15 years now, Hellenic Ministries has been hosting Operation Joshua, which is an effort to bring a, a New Testament in modern Greek to every home in rural Greece. Um, over the past uh, 15 or so years, we've given out about 1.5 million New Testaments door to door, delivering them ourselves with volunteers that come from all over the world. It's really an exciting effort and one that has been a joy to be a part of, one that we've made lots of friends from all over the world. What's the response when you show up at people's doors? Is that okay? <laughs> Often the responses aren't that positive. Mm. When someone shows up to your door here in Greece, they're usually a Jehovah Witness. Oh. Um, Greece is a country that actually has more Jehovah's Witnesses than Protestants. And they're very ener energetic and they have gained a very negative reputation in Greece. So there's always that barrier that we have to overcome. So in the villages especially, we are often met with hostility by the older generation. It's a mixed response, especially as we get to a little bit more small towns and, and such. Younger people can be quite open. Yeah. And then you had to work toward your Greek citizenship, correct? Yeah. So having grown up most of my life abroad, but born to Greek uh, citizens, my parents chose never to claim my Greek citizenship, not knowing if I would want to live in Greece or not. Uh, anyone who does claim their Greek citizenship is required to serve in the Greek military for a certain period of time, usually six to nine months, depending on the number of children in your family. So the point, and when we moved back about a year ago, I went ahead and claimed my citizenship knowing that we wanted to be here a long time. And uh, shortly thereafter, I received my uh, paper in the mail informing me of my uh, military obligations that were coming up. So, okay. Yeah. And you knew that was coming. You were prepared. Uh, how did you feel when you got those papers, though? Yeah, it was a bit stressful. I knew that I would be placed far away from home on the border of Greece and Turkey. I did not know if I would have access to uh, internet, my phone, uh, and, and I wasn't even sure how often I'd be able to come home or see my wife. So yeah, there were certainly a lot of unknowns. The coronavirus also um, added a level of uncertainty. Yeah, definitely, definitely was not something I was looking forward to. Right. And then when you, you arrived, was it like what you expected? Yeah. So it was in some ways better than I expected, in some ways worse. In terms of the location I was sent to, I could have been sent to various different places on different islands or different places on the Greek border. I was sent to certainly one of the worst possibilities. Oh. Very remote, just a tiny little village without even a, you know, a souvlaki shop or anything like that. But I was pleasantly surprised that I was able to keep my phone and was also given... Uh, leave to go home uh, three times. Oh, That was much better than I anticipated. Good, good. And how were the living conditions? The living conditions uh, are not, were not great. We have Turkish toilets in the Greek army. All the beds have bed bugs. Food is, is decent, but not great. Just generally very little sleep is uh, allotted. Most, most nights I would sleep three hours per night. And, oh. Yeah, whatever other time I got to catch up on in, in the, during the day. That seems impossible to have th three hours of sleep a night and bed bugs. That sounds terrible <laughs> to me. And you're handling weapons, correct? Yeah, every day we had guard duties in different locations, usually eight hours on guard a day, as well as other responsibilities. So then what was the relationship building like for the other guys in your unit? Yeah, just relationally, the army is... It's a really fun environment. It's almost like camp. Uh, it's just <laughs> a bunch of guys who are between 18 and, you know, 25 for the most part. Some, some up to 30 if they really delayed it in their studies. And you're all bunking in the same room, all dealing with the quirkiness and, you know, the strange behaviors of everyone. All the new soldiers are always a little bit insecure and uncertain about the environment. There's a little bit of hazing that goes on, you could say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you always have to respect the, the older guys. But yeah, it's a really fun environment and a really great opportunity for building relationships. Many guys leave and have friends that maintain over a long term. Yeah, that's awesome. So I picture the people training you just like getting in your face and yelling. That's what they <laughs> seem to do in my mind. Does that happen? Yeah, there was definitely a bit of that. And like if you get out of line, you have to do push-ups and all that. Depended on the superior officer. Theoretically, the Greek army specifically doesn't really uh, value physical fitness. It's always very surprising to people when I tell them that we actually weren't allowed to do any kind of physical fitness at our particular base because we didn't have a, a doctor on site and they were very worried about us injuring ourselves and causing them problems. So That is surprising. Yeah. So what were the major things they were training you in? Uh, mainly in uh, weapon usage. 
the first three weeks was just learning commands and being able to march together, uh, turn, salute, um, stand at attention, recognize the different ranks, take apart weapons, put them back together. So is the idea that they're actually training up everyone in the country if Greece was attacked to really defend? Yeah, the, the goal is every um, eligible male to be army trained and ready to defend the homeland if necessity called for it. So theoretically, I could get called back at any time. We all hope that never happens, though. Of course. So let's go back to the relationships you built. That's interesting. You said it's like a camp environment. How many guys did you sort of get to know through this six-month period from what I read in your newsletter that you got to mingle with some higher rank people too. Yeah. Um, so there's there's differentiation between uh, paid staff and army conscripts. Most of the guys that we really built deep relationships with were other guys that were just there for their mandatory military service. Our base was about half and half between paid staff and conscripts. And so you've got some friendships that are going to continue, you think? Yeah, definitely. Just all the guys we came in with were about 80, 80 soldiers at a time. My particular batch that we came in with were about 35 guys, and we did life together, morning morning till evening, uh, getting trained together, eating together, doing, going on duty together. One of the duties was walking around the whole perimeter of our army base and making sure it was all secure all the time, and it was one of the best opportunities just to have conversation and get to know people, and there's just endless opportunities to get to know others and yeah, build relationships for sure. Mm-hmm. And you want to represent Christ and everything that you do. So you were doing that. How did you represent Christ and show love to these guys you were living with? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it was very natural very quickly just to communicate who Christ is in my life uh, just by naturally conversing with guys around me. When you're authentic and you're real and you express information about your life, if Christ is really working in you and lives in you, uh, there's no way for that not to shine through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously my life looked a little different than a lot of others. Uh, The fact that I was married at 24 is very different than, I was the only married conscript, Mm -hmm. so that always made an impression on people. The way I talked was different. I interacted with the situation. How so? I tended to have a more positive outlook, I think, than a lot of others. It was easy for me to see the benefits of being Mm -hmm. there in terms of improving my language skills and getting to know the Greek culture better. And I knew I knew that God wanted me there at the time. Mm-hmm. So it was easier for me to have a positive outlook, I think, than a lot of other people that I was around. Mm. And I think that often made an impression on the people around me. Mm-hmm. As you got to know the guys, you got to understand like the man on the street, right? Just the, the normal young Greek guy and what their thoughts, their concerns, their maybe even fears, um, their dreams. What did yeah. you learn through that? Definitely got to see the experience of the average Greek up and close. For a lot of people, there's a lot of just lack of hope for a future career, a future in Greece in general. Um, It always shocks people when they learn that I lived abroad and chose to come back to Greece because almost everyone else is trying to leave Greece due to the economic situation. It's very hard to find work that is sustainable over over the long term financially. Mm. So a lot of hopelessness there. A lot of people are very familiar with the Christian faith as we are an Orthodox country. And yet to most people, it was not more than just folklore and the things that gram- their grandparents believed. So it always made an impression when people realized that I work for a church and I really believe all these things. And I believe them to the point where I live my life differently because of it. Mm. Um, so that made for a lot of interesting conversations. I think one thing that really made an impression on me is that people are open to embracing Christianity. There's a lot of disenchantment with the Orthodox Church and its inability to relate to the life of the everyday Greek person. Um, the Christianity that's portrayed in the Orthodox Church is often uh, very, feels very inauthentic, very disconnected. Mm-hmm. And I was really surprised how open people were to embracing Christianity that, to the idea of embracing a Christianity that is meant to impact every facet of our lives, mm-hmm. that is meant to change the way we live. There are a lot of great conversations around those topics for sure. Do you think that openness is because of that hopelessness that you mentioned before? It could be a factor. I think there's also just uh, built-in categories in the Greek person's mind to to our, to accept faith. Like we're a very spiritual, spiritual oh, country. Uh-huh. We're very, the gospel is, is not a foreign idea. Mm-hmm. It's just one that lacks, lacks power and lacks relevance. 
to the everyday person. I see. So if they see an illustration of someone living in that power or having true faith and they can testify that God is real right now and in their life, they are drawn to that. Yeah, I think I think there was certainly a willingness to at least uh, see what it's about. Mm-hmm. One of my friends who lives in Athens actually already came to our church uh, here in the city and had a really positive experience and was so surprised by our our building and the fact that it looked like a library inside instead of yeah the traditional uh, church that he's used to and a lot of the other guys that um, live in the area have demonstrated an openness to to come visit and. Mm-hmm. I think there's a the real willingness to explore. That's great. So did you change through this experience, Alexander? Did any of your theology change or, or how you interact with, with people change? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I think often as a, a kid who's grown up in the evangelical church, we, we often imagine and, and view ourselves as having almost a moral high ground to those who are outside the church. And that there's, there's certainly a sense in which we have certain moral moral values that we cling to tightly and hold to. But I, it really made an impression on me uh, how much kindness, how much character, uh, how much goodness I saw in the people around me. And just realizing that, you know, the image of God is in, in all humans. Mm. And he, God is at work and he's in everyone. Seeing other people being more willing to sacrifice and be kind, sometimes even than myself, really, really was a challenge to me. I didn't expect mm, that. Mm-hmm. So then how does that affect you going forward into your ministry at the church? It's a good question. I'm not sure how that plays out daily in the life of the church, but I think overall, in terms of takeaways from the experience, I would say that something that is definitely stayed with me is just the significance of having a church that is open to accepting uh, non-believers to that is open and prepared to communicate with people that aren't uh, from the church Mm -hmm. Uh, just thinking back to uh, my time at Whedon uh, some of our classes and talking about the significance of belonging before believing just creating a church environment where people are able to see the church community and be a part of it before having expected to profess faith I think is something that has really remained on my mind since finishing the army. Oh, I like that. Belonging before believing. Would you think of a, a biblical reference for that concept too? I'm not thinking of one right off the top of my head. Okay, that's fine. I just wondered if there is one taught in the class that stuck with you as well. Yeah. Because that's sometimes uh, what I, I think. How did Jesus demonstrate that? I wonder if when he called the disciples, they didn't they didn't really know everything about him. They didn't know he was the Messiah or didn't fully grasp. He made them belong first and they certainly. gradually believed, perhaps. Maybe theologians would debate. I don't know. I think of also the, the story of Zacchaeus, Christ inviting himself into his home and eating dinner with him and the impression that must have made on Zacchaeus before coming to the point of believing and trusting in Christ. And his heart change was really after that experience. Yeah, that's a great example. You know, you talked about so much time that you spent with the guys in the army, so that so much life on life, then in church ministry, it's so different, right? It's hard to get that much time with people. Definitely. It's a different different environment. And I think one of the, the main goals we have um, in our church here in Athens is creating opportunities to be interacting with people. Mm. Um, we want the relational time. The context we're in and here in Greece is very relational. We we love spending time together. It's easy just to send someone a message and say, hey, you want to hang out today and spend two or three or four hours together with that person the same day. You go for coffee, you go for a walk. Oh. So that's a huge part of what we want to be doing in our in our ministry here, for that's sure. That's good. Since you spent time in North America, do you have any comments to the people who want to be good ambassadors for Christ in our environment? Oh, that's a good question. I think our ability to represent Christ where we are is dependent on two things. One is the genuineness of our relationship with Christ and the amount to which he really has transformed our lives. If our lives are truly transformed by Christ, then that has to show at some point when you're interacting with other people. So I'd say that's the first thing and perhaps the most important. And the second thing is just creating opportunities to be interacting with people who aren't from our context. may have a transformed life, but if you never interact with someone who's from outside the church, then Mm. you can't really represent Christ. You have to you have to have opportunities to be interacting with with people who are different uh, who have not yeah recognized Jesus Christ as Lord. Yeah, makes so much sense. <laughs> well said. Do you have any book reference or recommendation, Alexander, for some of the things we've talked about today? Books that impacted you, maybe? Yeah, um, there's two books that come to mind: um, "Ministering in Honor Shame Cultures" 
by Jason George and Mark Baker was hugely impactful on me and really helped me look at the gospel through a different lens and help me understand the work of Christ and what it does to our shame. Mm. I think there's cultures and groups of people that have not heard that part of the gospel. So that was really impactful on me and I think helped me throughout my, my army time. And then also uh, How Not to Be Secular by James K.A. Smith. Um, it's a book where he reviews philosopher Charles Taylor um, and really explains a lot of the trends we see in this day and age. So those are two, two books I highly recommend. Okay, great. And then if anyone wanted to get connected with you or Hellenic Ministries or maybe even contribute or learn more, would there be a way they could do that, an email or a website? Yeah, um, someone, I'm always open, we're almost always open to partnering with people. Um, you can, I'll learn more about Hellenic Ministries and give online through HelenicMinistries.org. And then if you want to contact me directly, my email is alexmccrease96 at gmail.com. Alex McCreese. 96 at gmail.com and your last name is spelled m-a-c-r-i-s yes that's correct okay would you say a brief prayer for greece for us alexander and we'll pray along absolutely heavenly father we thank you for your grace we thank you for your kindness thank you uh, for the work you're doing in the world we are so grateful for your work on the cross for your resurrection for your defeat of of evil and sin we long to see your kingdom fully come here on earth. And we are grateful that you are already establishing it now here on earth. I pray specifically for this country, this country of Greece, a place that uh, has um, had your word for so long. We pray, God, that um, you would work here, that you would bring many people to an understanding of who you are and a commitment to following you. We ask that you would be Lord here, God. We love you, and we ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Alexander. Go back to that trivia point that you brought up about yeah. like where you met your wife. I'm very curious about that. Tell us. Yes, this is a question that was often asked in the Army. And uh, usually I'd explain to people, I grew up in the U.S. I live here in Greece now. I did my studies there. And then they'd often ask me where I met my wife. I'd say she was Canadian, but we actually met in Uganda. <laughs> uh, because both my family and her family uh, spent a few years there. My family actually still lives there until now. So we met in high school at 17 years old and began as friends and gradually um, started dating and got married about five years later. Well, that's, that's a great story. And once again, thank you so much for your time, Alexander. It's good to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening today. Alexander's 24-7 life-on-life experience in the military underscored the opportunity believers have to welcome others into life with Christ. His phrase was, belonging before believing. What do you do in the face of a tidal wave of human need? Join me next time as we visit Ethiopia to hear Tsagab's heart and be challenged by him. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe.